Okay, why am I getting feedback? Are we all right now? Is that, is that acceptable? Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, uh, good morning, um, members, uh, officers, and members of the public. And um, this is the uh, meeting of South Cambridge District Council Cabinet. My name is Bridget Smith. I'm the leader of the, uh, of the council and therefore the chair of the cabinet. Uh, we've only got three members of cabinet in attendance today. That's how many we need to be quorum. Uh, we've decided to um, veer on the side of caution because of the uh, escalating situation in South Cambridgeshire with COVID. Other members of the cabinet are joining us remotely, um, but only those members present in the chamber will be able to move and second motions and to vote. Uh, the members who are present virtually may speak may speak in the debate, of course, and uh, can signal to do so, as may other me other members. Uh, so the normal procedure in Cabinet is to take votes by affirmation and we'll continue with this tradition. When we move to a vote on an item, I'll ask members if they agree with the proposal. So... So apologies for that. That was the, uh, the routine Monday morning uh, fire alarm test. So, uh, so we're, not on, we're not on fire. Uh, so if I could just confirm that the meeting is quorum. It is, it is quorum. That's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so if we move on. Um, so we have apologies for absence. And we've got um, uh, Jonathan Moulton is... Um, Online, Jonathan, could you please uh, tell us who the apologies for absence are, please? Uh, good morning, Bridget. Uh, I can confirm we've received apologies from Councillor John Batchelor, the lead cabinet member for housing, and Councillor Judith Griffith, the vice chair of the scrutiny and overview committee. Thank you very much. Um, Jonathan's sound isn't very loud. It might need to be uh, increased. So. Apologies received from Councillor John Batchelor, who leads on housing, and from Councillor Judith Rippeth, who's the Vice Chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. So moving on to item three, declarations of interest. Do any members have interest to declare in relation to any item or business on this agenda? No. Um, if any interest subsequently become apparent later in the meeting, please would you raise it at that point? So, moving on to minutes of the previous meeting, which are on pages one to four. Um, members are asked to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of October. I move the approval of those minutes as a correct record. Um, have I a seconder? Happy to second. Uh, Councillor John Williams is seconding those. Uh, do members agree to approve the minutes? Anyone wish to vote against? Anyone wish to abstain? Thank you, Cabinet, therefore, agrees the approval of the minutes as the correct record by affirmation. So, moving on to public questions, uh, we've received two public questions. I believe both questioners are tuning in online. Um, so, just waiting for our technical wizard to come back. So, the first question is from Mr. Daniel Fulton. Um, are you there, Mr. Fulton? Uh, yes, I am. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Would you like to um, pose your question? Yes, thank you. In the Cambridge Independent on the 15th of September, the lead cabinet member for planning stated, quote, we are committed to work with Long Stanton Parish Council and North Stowe Town Council to investigate water levels across the local area. As part of its investigations into the groundwater levels and the effects of the development of North Stowe, has the district council actually obtained any data uh, on groundwater levels in North Stowe or Long Stanton after May of this year, for example, from borehole BH144 or from any of the other boreholes being regularly monitored by the developers. If the District Council has obtained any such data, why uh, haven't they been made available to planning officers and members of the public? And if the District Council uh, has not obtained any such data, why hasn't it done so? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fulton. I'm going to call on Councillor Toomey Hawkins, who leads on planning and is available um, on our connection uh, to respond to your question. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. 
to Councillor Dr Hawkins. I beg your pardon. Uh, thank you very much, Leader. Uh, good morning, Mr Fulton. Um, the District Council does not have specific borehole data on groundwater levels. However, as part of the application for NOSTO phases 3A and 3B, the applicant has supplied a technical report setting out the assessment of the impact of that development upon groundwater for consideration as part of the planning application. And the planning service is with consultees reviewing that material. Now, early in 2021, uh, the council funded a study on behalf of Longstanton Parish Council investigating the issue of groundwater impacts upon the Kingfisher Pond. The final report from HRW Wallingford was submitted to the Parish Council in May 2021. The council has prepared a draft action plan in consultation with the Parish Council that seeks to respond to the conclusions in that report. And South Cam's District Council continues to engage with Environment Agency and the Lead Local Flood Authority on the issue of groundwater conditions at North Stoke. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much, Councillor Dr Hawkins. Uh, Mr Fulton, would you have a secondary question you'd like to pose? Uh, yes, I do. Um, uh, the cumulative environmental impacts on groundwater of phases one, two, three A and three B are all material considerations for the upcoming decisions on North Stowe 3A and 3B. We had a very positive meeting. Local residents had a very positive meeting last week with Stephen Kelly, the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development. And we understand that he will be liaising with the Environment Agency and the Lead Local, of Florida, the Lead Local Flood Authority, as, as Councillor Hawkins uh, just said. Um, could, could I ask if uh, Councillor Hawkins, uh, in her capacity as, as portfolio holder, uh, could please regularly follow up uh, with Mr. Kelly, just so just so we have confidence that that our um, the leadership, the elected leadership of the council, is staying on top of this issue as we move towards a decision on three A and three B. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fulton, um, Councillor Dr. Toomey Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Leader. I do regularly communicate and meet up with uh, Mr. Stephen Kelly. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to uh, the next uh, question from the member of the public, Mrs. Jane, Jane Williams, um, I think has posed the question, but I think is unable to attend. So I believe Dr. Kate Grant is attending virtually and will be asking the question on her behalf. Um, Dr. Grant, are you present, please? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Would you like to pose your question? Yes. In May 2020, the Council voted to give all delegation powers for planning decisions to a single, unaccountable, unelected officer. You may recall this change was quite controversial and attracted vociferous opposition from councillors and a number of parish councils and local activists. You may also recall that during the debate, the leader of the Council, the lead cabinet member for planning and other from the majority group repeatedly promised that this change was only temporary and that the delegation scheme would be comprehensively reconsidered in the light of the findings of a report by the Planning Advisory Service. The report has long since been published, appears to have been forgotten, and yet the majority's undemocratic delegation scheme, which was promised to be temporary, remains in place more than a year and a half later. The council's leadership has promised time and time again that this will be a modern and caring council that operates in an open, honest and democratic fashion. And yet the council keeps falling short of these goals. What steps will the council's cabinet take to get the council back on track towards open, honest, democratic governance? And when will a truly democratic planning delegation scheme be put in place for the parishioners of Waterbeach and residents of South Cambridge? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Dr. Jimmy Hawkins, would you like to respond to that question? Uh, thank you, Leader, um, and through you. Uh, the Council remains committed to ensuring that the scheme of planning delegation provides good value for money to the residents and businesses of South Cambridgeshire, whilst at the same time ensuring that local voices are heard and recognised in planning decisions. 
I will tell you, and I think you know this, that the minutes of the weekly planning delegation meetings are published on our website, so are available to everyone to read. And I note with specific reference to Water Beach, the meeting of 26th October, and that the letter from the Water Beach Parish Council is published together with those minutes. And also at the meeting of the parishes and area two, area two team meeting on Wednesday, 1st December last week, the Assistant Director of Planning Delivery undertook to meet with Water Beach Parish Council to discuss specific issues of concern. And I intend to attend that meeting, my schedule permitting. The Planning Advisory Service recommended as part of its report that the Council keep the scheme of delegation under review. And a combined group of members and officers was therefore formed and have had discussions about what changes, if any, are needed to the current delegation arrangements to ensure the best serve our community. There is a wide range of views within the group about what arrangements might work best. An exercise is therefore currently underway to gather information from other planning authorities about the schemes of delegation used elsewhere and their respective merits. This information will inform further discussions within the group, which will allow a recommendation to come forward in the new year. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Dr. Toomey Hawkins. Uh, Dr. Grant, do you have a supplementary question? Yes, I do. And it is topical. As a follow up, we are increasingly concerned, despite assurances by Mr. Batchelor and Pippa Halings on the 29th of January 2021, seven hours, 21 minutes and 19 seconds into the recording, that reserved matters for applications on Water Beach strategic site would come back to the planning committee. They are now being handled in delegation meetings. Moreover, as Timmy Hawkins has said, minutes are published, but minutes of these are not being published in a timely manner. So currently, as of Sunday, the 5th of December evening, there is an unsigned, undated officer's report on a major application related to urban and civic, reference 21 slash 02009 slash full, where it refers to a delegation meeting purportedly held on the 16th of November, but no minutes have been published as of Sunday evening, the 5th of December. Thus, a decision has apparently been made where the grounds for a delegated decision have not been published. Surely this is not appropriate. And furthermore, with regard to the one that Toomey Hawkins has identified, Water Beach Newtown East Cycleway Footway, yes, the delegation meeting on the 26th of October did discuss this and agreed that comments should be obtained on the amended scheme. If it was found that the ward councillor and cycle group supported the amended scheme, it was agreed it would be a delegated decision due to technical nature of a discharge of a condition application. Were it the case that concerns remained, then the matter would be brought back to a future delegation meeting. Concerns did remain. It did not appear to come back to a further delegation meeting or not one of which any minutes are published. Maybe there is another set of minutes as yet unpublished. But again, we are not seeing the minutes of the delegation meeting in a timely manner. And we are really concerned with things like the cycleway footway, where we just get a decision notice and no conditions at all. Thank you, Dr. Grant. So there's quite a lot there. Um, Dr. Um, Dr. Toomey Hawkins, um, I suspect you might like to get a written response because I think there's probably rather too much there to um, to do you know, off the top of your head. Uh, but over to you. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, yes, I will have to go away and look at um, uh, the concerns that uh, Dr. Grant has actually raised. Um, but I will also reiterate that last week at the Area 2 Parishes meeting, um, we have undertaken to meet with Water Beach Parish Council because of the issues raised and the concerns that they have raised. And no doubt this will take place uh, very soon. And as I said in my earlier response, I intend to attend that meeting 
because of the concerns that Water Beach have raised. And I can assure Water Beach Parish Council that we are committed to ensuring that we come to uh, a complete understanding of what was required, what was said, what can be done um, under the, you know, legally or lawfully, shall I say. Um, and we will make sure that we do the best that we can uh, for Water Beach. But I will get back uh, to Water Beach Parish Council with, uh, with an answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Dr. Timmy Hawkins, and thank you, Dr. Grant, for your question. Uh, moving on to item six, uh, which are issues arising from the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Uh, welcome, Councillor Grenville Chamberlain, um, who's uh, tuning in. Um, would you like to give a report now? I think there's a few things which actually aren't relevant to the agenda, so over to you. Um, good morning, Leader. Good morning, Cabinet. Um, with your permission, Leader, if I may, I, I will take each of the items as we come to them on the agenda. Um, I think they, they will follow up quite nicely, so uh, I'll take it that way, if I may, please. Thank you very much indeed, and, uh, and it's nice to see you. It seems to have been a long time. Okay, so the, the, uh, moving on to the, uh, the rest of the agenda. Um, item seven is uh, the quarter two performance, um, quarter two performance report. Um, and uh, Councillor Neil Goff is going to introduce it, but because he's not present in the chamber, he can't uh, recommend it. So I, I will recommend it as the leader of council. And I think Councillor Williams, you're going to second it, aren't you? Uh, yes, I second it, uh, leader, and reserve my right to speak. Thank you. Uh, so over to Councillor Neil Goff, please, who's, uh, who leads on this, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Leader. I'll keep my comments very uh, uh, short on this. Um, I think, again, against the scrutiny pointed out, against the background of uh, the ongoing difficulties with uh, COVID, this is uh, uh, a really good set of performance indicators on ongoing um, activities. Um, I, I think there's a couple of areas I would just point out, one of which is the progress which has been made on the call centre. Um, we'll see that for uh, a long time we've been struggling with some of the performance indicators there, but they are actually improving uh, in that arena. And also the initiatives which have been taken place with respect to uh, the new tele telephony system, uh, with the introduction of the golden number, the interactive voice um, uh, routing, uh, and the callback provisions hopefully um, will continue that that progress and result in a much better level of service to those um, residents who who call in. And I also note the potential uh, for in the for first quarter of the introduction of the chat system, which will uh, help those who prefer to deal with that particular means of interaction. Um, the other area I'll just point out, which I think needs uh, to um, be mentioned, is, is on the complaints. We still have a sort of areas of uh, underperformance in terms of responsiveness on complaints. Uh, that is being addressed through looking at the procedures and the processes we have, uh, the particular areas in planning and housing. Um, where those numbers have, uh, have not met the, uh, met the targets, but we have uh, activities in place there to uh, um, support support that. Uh, that's the quarter two performance indicators. There's also the progress against the business plan targets. Again, just to uh, reiterate to uh, members, the colour coding there is that purple is completed, green is on track. Amber is sort of moving forward, but but delayed, and red is where the targets will not be not be achieved. Um, again, against the background of the challenges of the last year, it's gratifying to see quite a few of these areas now turning purple, uh, and many of them um, uh, sticking with the uh, the green designation. So, uh, uh, thanks to everyone involved to uh, keeping that on track. Thank you. Happy to take it. Thank you very much, Councillor Goff. We're getting quite a lot of interference at your end. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I think we, we did hear most of that uh, clearly. Um, 
Chair. Uh, Councillor Chamberlain, do you want to uh, contribute anything at this point on behalf of Scrutiny and Only Read? On the uh, no, Lady, we, we did consider this particular report. Thank you very much indeed. Um, right, I'll take questions and comments from Cabinet members. Um, Councillor Brian Milnes. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I was just going to suggest to Councillor Goff that he lifts his papers uh, rather than rest them on his uh, laptop or other device because it was that was that was causing the interference and made his... Um... <laughs> too, too late, I'm afraid. <laughs> thank, thank you for your technical input there. Um, thank you. Are there any more uh, comments from any members of Cabinet? If you just if you wave, I think I can see I can see you all. Um, I shall thank you. I'm going to go to um, other members present. I'm going to take initially Councillor Heather Williams, and then I will take Councillor Anna Bradman. So Councillor Heather Williams, welcome. Nice to uh, very kind of you to attend. Thank you, Leader. Um, sorry, it's a bit of an interference. The microphone. I'm just looking at page. 13, I think it is, it's hard when it's overprinted. Um, it's about the attendance satisfied with the response. And I, I note in, in the comments column, it says about a text message with a survey link is sent as soon as a job is completed. Um, now, I, I don't know about other members, but quite a, um, a few of the correspondents that I have over the phone are from tenants in our, in our housing, you know, council houses. Um, quite often not having access to internet or, or not um, uh, being of an age where um, IT was in the curriculum um, and indeed don't have a mobile phone. So I'm just wondering whether it, it does refer to the fact that we, we have quite a low response rate, whether really we, we haven't got the suitable uh, format for them responding um, and whether that could be looked into. Um, and the other, the other issue that I, I wish to raise was in fact the, the response on page 20, the formal complaints resolved within time scale, because it seems to be an ongoing, an ongoing issue, really. It's not sort of dipping in and out. We, we've um, been below intervention for, for a while now. So um, just wondering if there's any way of accelerating and adding some additional resources into that area to to bring things up. We don't like it when, you know, for people to feel they need to complain anyway, let alone if we're starting to get complaints about the complaint. Thank you, Leader. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor, Councillor Williams. Um, I'm going to ask Peter Campbell to um, respond uh, regarding your first point and uh, Jeff Membry on the second one. Uh, my understanding uh, with the sort of feedback from tenants is that we're looking at a sort of multimodal approach and that the feeling was that asking tenants on the doorstep uh, you know, but when, after a piece of work had been done, their level of satisfaction actually often garnered a more optimistic response than if they were they had a bit of um, they weren't having to talk to a person who just done the work. But I'll bring in uh, Peter Campbell on that initial point. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Leader. W what you say is absolutely correct. Um, that our uh, returns have been uh, have been low. Um, some of it is but people are reluctant to pass things over as well dur during COVID and take the uh, take things off uh, off people. Uh, we recognise that we what we need to do is offer a range of options for people to give feedback. Um, Eddie Spicer, who's been recently appointed as our, our new um, service manager of housing assets, is leading on this. We're going to be looking at in, uh, in, um, introducing a range of options within the current contract, and certainly when the new contract starts later uh, later in the year. We'll have a, ro a whole range of options embedded within that contract. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Campbell. Uh, you know, I think the, what we want is a, uh, an honest and realistic feedback from our tenants, not them feeling that they're having to be, you know, kind to the people who've just done done the work. So, by having this sort of multimodal approach, hopefully, we'll get a more more realistic feedback. Um, and on, um, you know, customer complaints, I know uh, Jeff Membry has been doing a vast amount of work and we're really pleased that we now have the golden number and also the additional um, phone back facility. So I think a lot of work has been completed very recently, which we probably haven't, aren't yet seeing the benefits of. But um, 
Jeff, you might you can probably add to that. Thank you. Uh, uh, um, yes, thank you very much, Leader. Um, as as you suggest, Councillor Williams, there was a need for additional resource to get the complaints, particularly in the planning service, up to date. That that resource has been put in. I had an update from uh, that that person at the end of November, and the vast majority of the the backlog of complaints have been cleared. I'm expecting all of the backlog to be cleared over the next couple of weeks. Obviously, we'll be into the next quarter's performance um, period. Uh, whilst that, that work's being undertaken. So I, I doubt we'll hit target um, for next quarter, but it's looking very promising for the quarter after that. Thank you very much indeed, Jeff. That's really that's really encouraging. Thank you. Um, Councillor Anna Bradnam, you had a question. Thank you, Leader. Yes, actually, um, Councillor Heather Williams has asked the question I was going to ask about um, tenants satisfied with responsive repairs. And I'm very encouraged to hear um, that Peter Campbell has um, appointed somebody to that post because of this need to give, give people time to think um, and not just respond on the doorstep. Um, but, you know, I do wonder whether something on paper might actually be a useful way of contacting some of our um, residents who maybe don't feel so confident on social media. Having said that, lots of them um, are very good <laughs> and use electronic means quite a lot of the time, but I just suspect there might be some who would find that harder to respond to. Uh, thank you. Um, Peter Campbell, do you want to come back on that? So whether yeah, you're I'm, still using uh, paper as well. Yeah. I agree. What we want is uh, to recognise that you know we've got you know, five and a half thousand tenants, uh, each with their own uh, you know, different needs. Some will prefer to do things um, immediately. Some may prefer uh, questionnaires through the post. Uh, others prefer it uh, before uh, prefer a, a telephone conversation afterwards with somebody who's in independence. Um, as leaders said, what we want to do is to offer a, a range of options uh, to best capture the um, uh, the feedback from from our customers. Thank you. And I'm certainly getting very positive feedback from um, residents living, living in Gambling Gay as well. So thank you very much. Um, Councillor Williams, do you want to uh, summarise as, as, as the seconder? And then I will ask Councillor Neil Goff if he wants any, to add anything. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm OK. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Goff, is there anything you wish to add? No, thank you. OK, thank you very much indeed. So the recommendation is set out in paragraph three of the report. Um, and that's to review the KPI results and comments at Appendix A and progress against the business plan actions at Appendix B, recommending where appropriate any actions required to address further issues. So do members agree with the proposal? Do anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? No? Okay, thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. And moving swiftly on to number eight, which is the empty home strategy. And um, Councillor Bachelor is not not present, so um, so I will I will propose this, and I think Councillor Bill Handy is going to uh, is going to second it. Yes, I'll agree. Do that. Thank you. And um, I think that uh, Julie Fletcher is going to talk to report for us. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you, Leader. Um, yes, so today I bring you the empty home strategy um, with the recommendation that this now goes out to wider public consultation and that Cabinet gives delegation authority to the lead member for housing to approve the final strategy subject to any minor amendments. So um, the strategy really sets the scene as to the current picture of empty properties within the district and how the Council aims to tackle these in the future. There is recognition that whilst there are no particular real hotspots of empty homes causing significant problems within the district, nonetheless, any empty home is a wasted resource and can be detrimental to the neighbouring area. So this has really been recognised in developing the strategy with the establishment of the Challenging Buildings Forum and also the Enforcement Working Group which will provide a consistent and a much more joined up approach in dealing with issues relating to empty properties. We're also looking for additional resources for 2022 to fund a dedicated officer to lead on empty homes, which was supported by the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. 
That committee also asked Cabinet to consider further options for the Council to buy empty properties with the owner's agreement under the terms of the Council's investment strategy. Um, I just wanted to note that there are already options for homes to be bought or rented out through either Ermine Street or Shire Home Lettings, um, but these options do have to be financially viable to make them work for the housing companies. And I would assume that this would be the same for any sort of council investment through the investment strategy. There was also reference particularly to um, shared ownership and equity share properties that the council has a stake in and potentially being able to buy these back. Um, and I understand that Urban Street has actually done this in the past, but again, it has to be at the right price and it has to be financially viable. Um, Scrutiny and Overview Committee also made the suggestion that perhaps we should consider raising the premium charge for the council tax. But I understand that these are set out by regulation and the council currently charges the maximum that it can. From listening to all the comments received during the development of the strategy, I do think that the council does need to be more proactive in working with owners to bring property bats into use. And I think by having a dedicated officer and the working group set up, this should help to facilitate this. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And I congratulate you on a really clearly written report and a copious amount of work that's gone into this. We're very grateful for it. Um, Councillor Chamberlain, there's obviously been <coughs> significant input from scrutiny and overview in this work, uh, which seems to have been highly beneficial. Would you like to comment at this stage? Thank you very much, Leader. Uh, yes, we were very complimentary of Julie's report as well, and I'm most grateful to her for taking, uh, for delivering most of my report. So I thank you very much for that. Um, we believe that we should be more proactive in trying to uh, recover these empty properties back into use and provide families with homes. And we were uh, really surprised to hear, or I was surprised to hear, one particular example of a property where this council has a 25% share uh, share of the ownership, and yet we've put in place a covenant which prevents it being let. Um, and I think there are opportunities for us, both in terms of seeking to acquire properties by agreement with the owners and either refurbish them and reletting them or selling them. Uh, and that could form part of our investment strategy. Um, and certainly where we have a shared ownership, putting a covenant in place which prevents them being relet, um, and therefore leaving people who desperately need a home without one. That seems to be an area in which we could take a more flexible approach. So, um, other than that, Chair, I have, Leader, I have to say uh, we very much support uh, Julie's report and are very grateful to her. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you very indeed. Much. Um, um, Julie, yeah, when does this go out for consultation and how long is that for, please? Um, consultation will um, go out in January um, now, I think. Um, it's not worth sending out before Christmas. And we usually have a six-week consultation period. Jolly, jolly good. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, any comment from any members? Uh, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, first of all, um, but my uh, congratulations and, and thanks to the officer for such a comprehensive report. Um, as you can see, the number of homes that are empty for more than two years is very small compared with the total housing stock in the district. Um, however, empty properties not only mean homes not being available for use, but can also cause a nuisance to neighbours if left in a poor state. Um, we want to minimise the number of homes left empty, and this strategy helps us to do just that. Why homes are left empty is varied and in many cases complex, and Councillor Grenville highlighted a particular case uh, which, which was just that. And as a result, um, they need to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. And so for this reason, um, I, I agree with the proposal that a dedicated post is created within housing to take this forward, to help ensure that the housing stock is fully used at this time of great need. So I shall certainly be supporting this. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Goff. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Leader. I'm very happy to support this. I particularly want to welcome the challenging buildings forum and the focus on problematic properties, because while, um, as uh, the Julie has pointed out, we don't have a widespread problem of um, buildings which are unoccupied. We do have a few very difficult situations which do give rise to uh, where, where the property is derelict, uh, potential intrusion with risk of, uh, of safety uh, for people who are actually you know, entering those buildings and antisocial behaviour. So uh, this is something which I know uh, residents in, in my uh, ward will welcome uh, as a way of sort of coordinating activity across the, chat, the, across the council and other bodies to, uh, to try and improve the situation of these, uh, of these buildings, which recognise a few in number, but they do cause uh, a lot of concern to local residents. So I welcome this and welcome the uh, initiation of that aspect of, uh, of, of this uh, report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Golf. Pop points well made. Uh, Councillor Brian Milnes. Yes, I'm, I'm rather going to uh, echo uh, previous comments as just made. Um, the ASB aspect of empty properties uh, can quickly escalate. We've had local uh, cases uh, where we've had to try and get police um, uh, action, but we've got our own ASB housing enforcement officers um, who can uh, pick up this action. So that's is important that we actually as a, uh, a membership of the council are aware of that. Uh, so I definitely welcome this, this report in that respect. And the other thing that uh, I'd like to pick up on is uh, Councillor Chamberlain's uh, comments from the scrutiny committee. Um, and I think we, we do need to uh, look at that uh, strange situation uh, where basically you've got tenants in a bind uh, in, in regard to that um, uh, covenant that we impose, um, where um, it, it, it's a very frustrating uh, situation for those tenants and uh, we need some flexibility in, in order to be able to sort those uh, situations out sensibly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mills. Councillor Dr Toomey Hawkins. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Leader. Um, I know the problem is not widespread, but um, I happen to have uh, two in two of my wards um, out of five villages in the ward. So, um, you know, that's 40 percent for me. Um, I therefore welcome uh, this strategy because I have been asking about it for quite a while. Um, one of those actually we have as a council done some work on the property to strengthen it, and I think we have a restriction of some sort on it. So we do need uh, something to help us move forward. And I particularly will be um, looking forward to seeing the outcome of the consultation so that we can get this thing uh, in place and moving quickly. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, we look forward to seeing positive results from this. Um, I think that's all the cabinet members wishing to speak. Uh, Councillor Anna Bradnam. Thank you, Leader. Um, I am just mindful that one of the options that is offered to um, owners is that the council purchases the property um, through, I believe, through Shire Homes or um, Ermine Street. And I just wanted to check um, and maybe ask the question, who would do the valuation? Because we need to be very clear that it a reasonable value is being put on a property. And I wondered whether we would probably use our own valuers, but also would we use a commercial valuer to assess the value of a property? Just wanted to check out how that might happen. It would be very unfortunate, for example, if we acquired a home and um, rented it out for, uh, you know, for, for rental. And, and it was found that the original value that was paid to the owner was um, very low. Thank you. I can see that uh, Peter Campbell is offering to um, answer this question. Yes, of course. Um, we, um, Ermine Street, of course, have got a, a, a good track record of buying properties. Uh, and the process is that, the, that it would um, be um, uh, valued by Rick's qualified, uh, qualified surveyor. 
uh, and to make you know, to make sure it's stacked stacked up financially. Um, Leader, may I? Yep, you can. Yeah. Please do. Sorry, would but the the argument would be if that was a yes a qualified surveyor, but working for the council. So I just wondered, would as it were the owner be able to get a valuation and have that put into consideration as well? Of course. Okay, thank you. Of course, but but um, if we've got to, so it, it it wouldn't be like a like like a right to buy where there'd been a negotiation. It would still have to be financially viable for the council uh, at, at the end of the day. Yeah. So the balance of, of of power would probably be more with the council than the uh, than the vendor in that case. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Claire Dalton. Thank you, Leader. Um, could I ask a question about uh, the scope of the consultation? Who will be con consulted and uh, and when? Uh, Julie, would you like to answer that? Yeah. Um, so, so we have a consultation um, web page on that, uh, her web pages, so it will go up on there um, and, and we, we can send out to those that we know have an empty property, so all the owners of empty properties, we can let them know that the consultation is live as well. Um, might I come back, Leader? Yes, please do. Yes. Um, thank you, Julie. Um, and sh I assume then that we as members um, should let parish councils know that this consultation is going on. Julie, I'm sure we are, aren't we? Yes, I think it's sort of standard practice that they're aware of the consultations on our web page, but I can definitely let them know just to sort of um, highlight it to them. More than happy to do that. Thank, thank you, Julie, because I, I, I guess I'm other myself and others will have questions from parish councils when empty homes become uh, an issue in, in our ward. So it would be really good to include parish councils. Thank you. Thank you. And I, there's obviously a role for all of us as local members to um, to raise the uh, consul consultation with our residents and with our parish councils as well. And it's, I know from personal experience that just, you know, one empty home can cause a huge um, annoyance to uh, people in, people living in a village, as well as frustration that there's a home that um, somebody, somebody could be living in. So I welcome this, um, you know, a really good piece of work and it'll be very interesting to uh, hear back in a few months' time about how effective it's proving to be. Um, Councillor Handley, as seconder, do you want to um, add anything to this before we go to the vote? I don't think I need to add anything. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so the recommendation is set out at paragraph four of the report. Um, A, approve the draft empty home strategy 2021 to 25 as set out at Appendix A and go out to wider public consultation. And B, delegate authority to the lead member for housing, which is Councillor John Batchelor, to approve the final strategy subject to minor amendments, if any, arising from the consultation. Do members agree with the proposal? That's, that's unanimous. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And moving on to item nine, um, which is at page 65 to 110, and this is the investment strategy, and Councillor John Batchelor uh, is going to be presenting this, and I'm very happy to second it. So over to you, Councillor, sorry, Councillor John Williams. <clears throat> Too many Johns. My apologies. Councillor John Williams, over to you. Thank you, Leader. Um, well, as we all know by now, um, changes to the Public Works Loan Board rules um, last, um, but this time last year, actually, almost a year ago now, um, have made this necessary because um, those rules have ruled out uh, Stream 1 uh, investments, which are investments that are uh, purely for um, yield. Um, so the opportunity has been taken to um, not only amend the um, investment strategy, but also to review it in entirety and to uh, not just to take into account the rule changes, but also um, to adjust the figures um, so that they're in accordance with the, uh, the MTFS, the uh, Midterm Financial Strategy that um, this cabinet adopted uh, very recently. Um, the main changes um, to the strategy um, involve um, Stream 2. These um, are investments which are done 
um, not just for commercial gain, um, but includes things like uh, regeneration. And what we've done is we've uh, split that um, stream two into, um, divided it into um, those um, investments that are made to support uh, local services and those that are undertaken to deliver commercial regeneration and, and, uh, and housing. And for both of those, the current minimum yield of 2.5% is, is being retained. Um, I'd just like to say that there are some uh, changes that need to be made to the report. Um, first of all, um, in paragraph 7.3.2, the yield should be 2.5%. Two has been missed off. And there are figures to be updated in the tables in paragraphs 8.4.1 and 8.4.2. And I think uh, we were going to have these amendments shown. So you can see there that um, um, the figures that uh, have been changed to those that are in yellow, that have been highlighted in yellow. Um, it's not a great change on this particular one, but there are some slight amendments that uh, have been made um, to bring it in line with the, uh, the new MTFS. Um, obviously, as we go forward um, and we consolidate the budget and... Um, complete the budget for next year, um, in all probability these figures will change again uh, before um, the report is presented to Council. So that's 8.41 and 8.42, can we see that? Yeah, that's 8.42. So again, those figures that have been changed have been highlighted um, and I'm quite happy to answer any questions, uh, Leader. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, if we could just, um, if you could take the slide down, please, so that we can, we can see people again. Okay, so I hope that was all comprehensive, comprehensible. Um, Councillor uh, Chamberlain, is there anything you want to add at this stage? Right, you're muted, Councillor Chamberlain. My apologies. Seems to be the most popular term we hear today. Um, if I may just uh, say a few words on this, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, Scrutiny did recommend that the Cabinet considers the adoption of the principles of disclosure, uh, particularly where those in investments might be impacted by uh, climate change. Um, we wonder whether it ought to be the investment strategy in view, in view of the changing circumstances in which we find ourselves. But a review, perhaps more often than twelve months, could be should be could be appropriate. Um, we did indeed have a significant discussion clarifying the new rules relating to the Public Works Loan Board. Uh, and whilst there are risks for the council, there are also opportunities particularly in borrowing money to promote green to our core objective of the business plan. Uh, we were grateful that we were able to clarify that uh, the new rules would not preclude us from borrowing money to maintain properties outside the district, those particularly that have been bought through Ermin Street, Ermin Street Housing. Um, I'd like also to invite Cabinet to, to, to highlight the idea of bringing the empty property acquisition into um, this investment strategy uh, that would clearly have to be by uh, agreement with the owners, but we feel that it is uh, there is a significant opportunity uh, to create some income as a result either of letting or reselling property at a profit. And finally, we members expressed concern about the potential for conversion of offices to residential use. Um, the, usually the design and structure of offices uh, is not 
particularly suited to residential use. And there has been a lot of criticisms in other areas where this has been done. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Chamberlain. Um, Councillor Williams, do you want to comment on Scrutiny's suggestion about the empty home strategy forming part of the um, part of the investment strategy? I mean, I suspect some work needs to go on to actually identify what the opportunities are. Uh, thank you, Leader. Well, there's no there, there's no reason not to treat um, that as uh, as part of the investment strategy, although clearly the numbers involved as we know, are extremely small. And, um, and it's certainly something we will look at, but um, the current, that is really the current policy, um, if we can, uh, we will uh, purchase um, if it's financially uh, beneficial to do so. But it certainly can be done within the investment strategy and is something we can look at. Picking up on the other two points that uh, Councillor Grenville made. Um, yes, uh, reviewing this every six months, I think that, that given the, the present very um, changeable financial circumstances we find ourselves in generally with regard to um, um, COVID and Brexit, and um, I think that is very sensible, and we certainly will um, look again um, and review the strategy every six months. And um, the last point you made, um, which was to do with, um, I can't think what it was now. <laughs> um, conversion of offices. Oh, that's right, converting offices to, to homes. I mean, we have no intention at the moment to do that. It's not our policy to do that. But clearly, um, we cannot rule anything out. But uh, certainly at the moment, there is not a necessity to look at that. And also, there have been no commercial properties anyway that have come forward. Given, given the situation we find ourselves in Greater Cambridge, where demand for office space is very strong, um, I doubt actually we would, it would be financially viable anyway to convert office accommodation into um, homes because of the uh, premium um, um, value that, that is put on office accommodation in the Greater Cambridge area. Thank you very much, I'm grateful. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Um, I'll just invite Peter Maddox to add, add anything to that as well, if you'd like to. Yeah, and I think what was said earlier, I think Julie mentioned it, that um, any property, any empty property that we purchase, as John said, would, would need to be financially viable, but it also need to be the right property in the right place as well. So that would all be all that I would say on that. Thank you very much indeed. Right, are there any questions from members of cabinet? No. And other councillors? I'm stuck with uh, Councillor Anna Bradman. Thank you, Leader. Uh, yes, um, certainly. Uh, the I'm reassured to see, and I think the. Um, I was concerned about this convert potential for investing in properties, commercial properties for conversion to residential dwellings. And I, I'm trying to compare the papers that we received at Scrutiny and Overview with this draft. And it looks to me as if the section which referred to that has actually been amended. I'm not sure. It, the, the, the phrase was projects where the intention is to inject further investment, blah, blah, blah. For example, purchasing an office building with the intention of converting it to say into residential or other uses. And I can't see that now, but I, the, the papers have been amended quite extensively. And I just wanted to check, is that still in the policy or has that been removed? Uh, okay. well, it was, it was that I'm sure it's not Section two, something, something C. Yeah, I, I was intending to remove that reference. I, I, I was just having a look to see if I could see. Sorry, 2.2 two C. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, it, there were several sets of ABC in the original section two. There was, um, it went through commercial regeneration 
then preventative category, then housing. And it was in that third section of text which had ABC and that was where it referred to converting office buildings. But two, two looks shorter now. And I, I just wanted to see if that wording had been removed or if that was still in there. Yeah, so, certainly if members would like me to make sure that wording is removed everywhere within the documents, I'm happy to do that. Thank, thank you, Mr. Maddox. Well, certainly I, at the combined authority, I voted against every application to convert um, office space into housing um, for the reasons that um, Councillor Chamberlain um, expressed. So, uh, so I think the answer to that is yes, please, Mr. Maddox. And Okay, thank I'm, you I'm very grateful, Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, this is a, re a referral, obviously, to Council, so I'm sure more, more comments will be made when it, it merges into its final, uh, final submission. I'm just wondering, the tables that were displayed, if it's possible to have those circulated, because it was quite difficult to, you know, to really see the uh, details on the screen. So I would appreciate if that could be sent round. Um, I'm just looking at page 109. W one point sort of picks up on actually the comments from scrutiny about the weighting for EPC and sustainability. So I'm I'm potentially making the assumption is when we when we look at this, we're looking at it in its current form and not its potential form. And whether you know, because for example, if it's a listed building. Um, I know those are the leaders' favourites. They're very difficult to to make enhancements to, or there might be other some limiting factors. Um, so, how are we how are we intending to weight that, and whether there is potential there to look at its current form, and then what its um, you know its sustainability potential? Because actually, that's something that we might want to uh, to weight higher what we can what it could be in its final. Um, entity, given that that would then help us actually in re reducing the district's carbon footprint. So that, that's just one thing we could have clarification from the member for finance on. And the other was the tenancy strength, just something around the rationale of um, changing the weighting factor in the current, uh, current climate. Thank you, Leader. Sorry, could you just repeat that last one for me, please? So at page 109, the tenancy strength there's a reduction in weighting factor from 10 to 8. Got you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to, so you're, you know, you're speaking my language when you talk about um, weightings for uh, carbon reduction. So that's, that's good news. But I'm going to bring in uh, Mr. Maddox just to you know, talk about the detail of, of those, of your questions. Yeah, so um, we felt that we needed to change some of the tenancy strengths with equally. I mean, um, this can be reviewed again as time goes by, but that, that was what we felt that that was the, the right approach. Uh, if members have got any comments on, on any of those before the final version, then, um, you know, then we can look at that again. But um, based on conversations that we've had, we felt that that was the, the right, um, the right ratios to include, uh, sorry, the right weightings to include there. I would add that this, the, the strategy itself um, we'll need the figures updating for the final version for full council. So, um, I mean, that, th th those are the, the, the figures that we feel are correct. Um, I don't know whether there's... Is there a particular problem you feel with the tenancy strength? Is there a... You're welcome to come back, Councillor Williams. Um, I was just thinking in the current climate, obviously, we want the, the tenancy strength, I would say, is probably one of the most important things. We want to make sure to um, that public, this is public money, taxpayers' money, that it's in as secure as a form as possible. Um, so that's why I was just wondering why the, why the change, really. I can understand the location change, given the changes to PWLB. Um, particular because obviously if it's going to be in the district it's going to be prime um, and I just wanted to make sure that we are looking for the most secure tenants possible to give some security for that money being invested um, and then obviously the I'm pleased to hear we're on the same page doesn't always happen leader on um, sustainability 
Uh, thank you. So, I mean, I think my response to that would be that, um, you know, location is, is the highest, has the highest weighting factor, um, and it was 12 and it's now 10, and tenancy is the second highest, and it was 10, so it's now 8. So, you know, in comparative terms, actually nothing's changed. It's exactly, it's exactly the same. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, satis I'm satisfied that a considerable amount of work has gone into this, but I'm, you know, we will, we will of course, keep it, keep it under, rev under review. But I thank you for your input there. Councillor Williams, is there anything you want to add on that? Well, just, just to say, Leader, that this has been based on our experience to date. I mean, when we drew up this uh, table um, two years ago, we had no experience of, uh, of dealing with... Uh, investments, um, commercial investments, the only investment this council had made was in its own housing company and it didn't have any other investments to talk of. And it needed um, a set of criteria for us to be able to judge um, schemes coming forward. And uh, it was very much done on looking around at what other councils are doing. Well, now we've had two years of our own experience, we are better able to judge what better suits our circumstances in South Cairns. And that's why we've taken the opportunity to have a look at the weightings and adjust them um, accordingly. However, as has been said, and as I've said earlier, we are now going to review this every six months. So uh, there will be opportunity going forward for us to uh, revise these uh, weightings if we feel that there needs to be an adjustment. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Williams. Um, so, you know, I, I um, congratulate um, Peter Maddox, Maddox for the uh, transparency of this, this report with the track changes, which makes it very, very easy to follow uh, for, for all of us. So that's excellent. And the fact that it's written in plain English, which is uh, a thing of joy for papers that are basically financial papers. Um, and as Councillor Williams has said, Councillor John Williams has said, you know, we have learned an awful lot in the last last few years on investments, and you know, the council has been extremely extremely successful, and the uh, the financial stability and strength of this council, you know, is in part due to its investment its investment strategy and the investments it's made, which allows us to keep on, you know, giving giving grants out to uh, communities as well as uh, you know. Employing, employing people to do the work that so badly needs to be done. So, uh, so my thanks to um, all of uh, P uh, Peter Maddox's team for all the work that's gone into this. Uh, so the recommendations set out in paragraph three and cabinets recommended to, um, subject to the amendments we've talked about today, recommend to full council the updated investment strategy attached to Appendix A, which includes a range of investment indicators to comply with the statutory guidance on local government investments and the governance arrangements that enable the council to seek approval for priority investments in a timely manner in response to market conditions. Do members agree with the proposals? Okay, that's unanimous. So Cabinet therefore approves the proposals by affirmation. And... Item number 10 is uh, more, more money stuff, the capital yeah, programme we... update and new bids. Leader, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to check whether that report will go to full council in its current form, in other words, showing the amendments, or will it be in its consolidated form? I'd actually think I'd prefer with the um, amendments, but I just wanted to ask. Uh, Mr Maddox? Yeah, that was the intention, Councillor. Okay. Which, which? So that was the intention for it to go with the track changes in. So that great, right. that's lovely. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's really useful having track changes. It's quite irritating when you don't have them actually. Thank you. Um, okay, so back to um, the capital program update and new bids at ten, page one hundred eleven to one hundred thirty-four. Uh, John Williams is uh, presenting this, and I believe that Councillor Handley is going to second it. Yes, Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, Councillor John Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, the um, changes to the capital programme and uh, the new bids are outlined in paragraphs um, 2.3 and 2.5 for the revised uh, programmes in those tables. Um, happy to take any questions on that. There is one um, um, uh, amendment to be had, um, and that is um, under human... Uh, resources system. Um, it's shown against uh, Susan Gardner-Craig, 
and actually that should be Jeff Membry. Okay, that's it. Jolly good. Thank you very much indeed. Um, any cabinet members like to comment on item 10, the capital programme update and new bids? No. Uh, Councillor Chamberlain, have you anything to contribute to this? My apologies, sorry, Leader. Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, scrutiny did not consider this report. Okay, thank you very much indeed. And any questions or comments uh, from uh, other councillors? Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. I'm just looking at page 132 on the external fundings. There's quite a few um, variances. I'm assuming that's Cambridge City Council, the CCC. Um, there seems to be quite a few variances between the budget and the, and the revised figures. So just wondering if we've got any explanation around that. Right, I haven't got my page numbers on this online. Um, that's in one of the appendices, is it? It's page, I'm on the online version, it's page 132 on the line. The bookmarks, if you actually go to number 11 and go up a couple of pages, that helps. Okay, okay fine. Um, Mr. Peter Maddox? So is, is there a particular, particular one you're, you're looking at, uh, Councillor Williams? Uh, well, the three, so the external funding from CCC for waste vehicle, external funding for waste IT system, and CCC for electric charging infrastructure, the, the budget and the revised, all three of them are so, yeah, CCC quite, quite varied. So I'm just, just wondering if there's a, you know, a reason for that this year. I, I mean, other than the fact that we, we will have reprofiled the cabinet programme significantly, and that would be in line with that. Um, so on the table, for example, we don't actually show the original for 21, 22 anyway, so it doesn't doesn't compare on Appendix C. Are you look, you're looking at specifically at Appendix C. Sorry. It doesn't tell us in the online version, does it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, Appendix C, page 132. Yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah, so all it is, it will be a, a delay in purchasing vehicles or you know, there's any changes within the capital program. So when we change the capital program, we completely review all the finances just to make sure it's in line with what the new expenditure profile is. Please come back, yes. Thank you. So, so to confirm, it's not a case of the expense has been made and, and we're waiting for funds to come in. Oh, no, no, it's just, it, it would just be reprofiling. So it's just in relation to the profiling. Yep. Okay. Jolly good. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Claire Daunton. No, leader. I didn't have my. I didn't Did you, ask oh, right, to speak. I, I saw your name pop up there. Uh, right. No. I, well, if I might, just then, um, if it would be possible for Peter Maddock to move the microphone closer. Um, it was difficult to hear him. That's what I put in the chat. Thank you. Oh, right. <laughs> Jolly good. Jolly. For that. That's all right. Okay. Uh, Can Councillor Bradman. Thank you, Leader. Um, I just wanted to make the observation on the same place that um, Councillor Heather Williams has referred to in Appendix C on page 132. CCC is a very ambiguous uh, statement, particularly with regard to waste, because, of course, Cambridge County Council is the disposal authority. So can I just ask for those of us who work across both city and South Cams and county, could you just use city and county when you when you so city CC and county CC rather than just CCC? Otherwise, it's not clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good point. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Councillor Bradman. Okay, right. Moving to uh, the recommendations set out at three of the report. I'm not going to read it all out because it's quite long. Um, so, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. So, that's unanimous, and Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So, item 11 now is the revenue and capital budget monitoring for quarter two, and that's going to be presented by Councillor John Williams, and I will second it. Um, so, over to you again, Councillor John Williams. 
Thank you, Leader. Um, I put that in tab on this actually. Um, it's um, very little difference from the quarter one, and um, it shows that we are on track um, to uh, achieve the outturn, uh, the revised outturn of the revised budget that we introduced following COVID. Thank you. So that's uh, that's a good result. We're all on track. Marvellous. Um, any um, Council Chamberlain, do you want to contribute to this? Um, thank you for the opportunity, Leader. But no, we scrutiny did not consider this report. So that's fine. I will, I'll keep on asking you. <laughs> thank that's, you. That's very um, kind. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, members of Cabinet, anybody wish to contribute? No. And any members wish to discuss this? Nope. Okay, fine. So uh, moving on then to the um, cabinet's recommend. So yes, cabinet's recommended to a note the forecast 2021-22 revenue position against the approved revenue budget shown in Appendix B. The projector major variances with reasons for these variances as appendices C1 and C2 and the action being taken to address the underlying issues. And B, note the latest capital programme 2021-22 position and variances, if any, as shown at Appendix D. So, um, sorry, let's catch up, catch up with myself. Um, so, do members agree with the proposal? That's uh, unanimous. So, uh, Cabinet um, approve the, uh, agree the proposals by affirmation. And... On the last leg, two to go. Um, item 12 is bids and savings, page 161 to 180. And Councillor John Williams is going to present this. And Councillor Bill Handley, you're going to second it. Thank you. And over to you again, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Leader. Well, this, yeah, this is the, um, the start of the uh, putting our budget together for next year, for 22-23. And it's very exciting because, um, as you can see, we are proposing a number of in increases um, in uh, services uh, to our residents. Uh, we're also intending to uh, make the uh, council more robust. Um, and can I first of all thank uh, the leadership team and in particular the finance team for all the work that they've done in, in sifting through the various bits and putting this um, together in front of us today. Um, the extra costs um, are, in doing this are more than offset by um, um, savings and um, particularly things like the transformation of the council such as the introduction of the golden telephone number and additional investment income which as you said earlier is enabling us to um, improve our services, employ more staff, and increase the quality of the offer to our, tenant, uh, to our tenants and to our residents. Uh, for example, if you look, um, you'll see that there are new posts. Some of these new posts are permanent. Some are for a specific period of time to enable us to um, see whether or not um, they, they should be made permanent or to meet um, a particular need at this moment in time. For example, we are proposing an empty homes officer, which uh, we discussed earlier. We're looking at three money advice posts for housing. We're looking at another fraud uh, prevention officer for our highly successful fraud um, team. Uh, we're looking at external funding officer in finance, another contract management officer, and um, IT support uh, for members. And in addition to that, we are also looking at introducing a post to help with antisocial behaviour, uh, which is not actually in this um, um, proposal, but will we'll be in the budget that's put to um, full council in February. Um, also, we're making some temporary posts permanent. Uh, the business support officer for waste, the housing advice and accommodation officer for shire homes, the HMO post in housing, and the Facilities and Compliance Officer. All these temporary posts uh, we intend to make permanent. Um, apart from um, staff, um, we're going to provide more funding for the Commercial Development and Investments Team. 
the, the housing visiting support scheme to make up for the county council cut in its contribution to this service, uh, a new staff engagement and development budget, more money for apprenticeships, and a grow our own talent project in planning, and a supplement for our HGV drivers. And we're also intending to bring back in-house the cleaning of our offices and vehicles, uh, which will actually make a saving. So as you can see, um, this is quite um, an exciting uh, uh, budget for next year, uh, one which we can well afford because of the transformation of the county of the of the council, together with um, the additional income that we are getting from our investments, enables us to do this. And um, and I think I say this many many times, despite. Um, um, mischief made by others, we are in a very, very strong financial situation. We are very, you know, we are extremely healthy financially, and I look forward to us um, further developing this council to meet the needs of our residents going forward. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Williams. It is indeed a good news story. And, um, you know, as it's, it gives me huge pleasure that we are investing in people. There's nothing better to spend money on. And I think the, uh, the confidence we have in our executive management team means that, uh, you know, we, we absolutely know that these investments are going to deliver huge benefits for our, for our residents. So, uh, so my thanks to all of our executive management team, as well as to the finance team who've already uh, referenced, who've, put, again, put massive massive effort into this work, um, along with everybody else, of course. It is a team of the whole council. Um, so, um, Councillor Handley, do you want to speak at this point? Oh, just to say, what a great report. <laughs> um, um, I think we're, we're one of the few councils, aren't we, that are in a particularly good financial position, I gather? Uh, think, uh, yeah, can I say that um, I think we've all seen the Unison report on which councils are going to be cutting uh, their budgets next year, and we are one of the very few councils in the country that will not be cutting our budget next year. Yeah, that's great news. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Right. Any co uh, questions or comments from members of Cabinet? Uh, Councillor Chamberlain, have you anything to contribute on this uh, no, thank you, Leela, but we will be looking, of course, at the budget in due course. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Any questions from um, other councillors? Uh, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, I've just got one thing that I think could do with a bit of further explanation in the chart on page 171 um, about the countywide partnership project, and then the description is the countywide partnership project. I'm just thinking for transparency reasons, it, it may help to have a little bit more than just the uh, repeated sentence. Um, I'd also stress somebody that sits on the Audit and Corporate Governance Committee about um, please do take very seriously the needs of the Finance Department in the, in the budget process going forward, along with as a member of the Staff and Employment Committee, we know that we have a high dependency in planning on agencies, and I imagine that's got something to do with with the um, overspends there. So we, if that can be looked at in great detail while the budget is being prepared. Um, and uh, I hope that doesn't get the accusation of mischief making, although um, Councillor John Williams in his former role was, a, was I think, Loki himself uh, when it comes to mischief. And so, uh, so yes, but, um, and I, I do hope, given that comment, Chair, that the leader does agree that it is important about holding the cabinet to account and that that can actually be genuinely motivated. Um, interested on your views on that, Leader. Well, uh, thank you, Councillor Williams. Well, I hope, you know, the, you know, the, the welcome that I've given uh, Councillor Chamberlain uh, on every item, I hope, you know, affirms that, uh, you know, we, we do welcome that scrutiny and we're all better. You know, the very fact that Councillor Chamberlain chairs scrutiny for us shows that um, you know we do welcome we do welcome that external review of everything we're doing and it does and it does add value and you know there are jobs there are new jobs identified in this paper which have come about because of the scrutiny 
uh, that your, you know you and your colleagues have been heavily involved with, and we've listened to because you know you like me represent your residents, and we all want what's best best for our residents. And um, little bits of mischief creep in every now and then, and as long as we're fair that everybody's allowed a bit of mischief at times, um, we shall move on. But I'm going to ask um, our chief executive Liz Watts to uh, respond to you on your your two points there. Thank you, and actually I was going to respond on the first point, if I may, Chair. So on the countywide partnership project, you're right, it does sound a bit vague at the moment, Councillor Williams. Um, the leaders of all of the public sector organisations got together in October um, and are in the process of drafting a vision and um, a strategy for countywide working. So that's not the county council, that's working across, across the county. And so um, we have put in a sort of, it's a hold really, just so that at the point when we come to um, the leaders all agreeing a single project that they want to de deliver together, the idea being that there are some things that we do well on our own, there are some things that we do better together. We will have a funding stream from next April for, for that project. So, so I hope by the time of council, we, we may have some more information on that. Thank you. Yeah, and I couldn't. I could. I couldn't tell you what it looks like at the moment because I don't know. We had, a, you know, we we had a workshop, and uh, we we shall see. I think. I think the point is that actually COVID has really, you know, shown how working together delivers huge, yeah, you know, fantastic, fantastic results. Really, we couldn't have done what we did without the support of the county council, public health, police, fire, everybody else. So I think you know, it'd be a shame. What we don't want to do is lose lose all that, lose the good partnership working, which um, which wasn't there before. Um, so, you know, there are opportunities, particularly as we, we move, hopefully, one of these days into proper recovery from COVID. Um, I'm going to ask Je um, Jeff Membry to co uh, comment on um, how reliant we are, are on agency staff and whether um, some of these new posts will actually reduce our reliance on having a agency staff in to fill gaps. Um. Thank you, uh, Leader. Certainly, the the service review that's currently under be, being undertaken of the, of the planning service is very conscious of the fact that uh, we are very reliant on agency staff at various times. What we're looking to do is to change the processes and the way that we work to reduce that reliance. I don't know whether it directly relates specifically to any of the the, the posts mentioned in this report, but it's certainly uh, it's certainly an area that we're focusing on very very carefully. Fine. So, you know, sorting out the systems so that, you know, the people, the people we have are able to do their, do the jobs, um, yeah, do the jobs different, differently, better, and hopefully less stressfully for them. Stressfully? I'm not sure that's a word. Right. Um, yeah. So moving on to other members, uh, Councillor Anna Bradman. Thank you, Leader. Um, I am looking at Appendix B, the General Fund Revenue Bids one-off, and I was really um, pleased to hear that list that Councillor John Williams gave us of the new initiatives, and I'm particularly pleased to see um, reference on page 172 um, under Housing, Housing Advice, and the title is a Money Advice Service, um, that three advisors will be employed to advise on money management, income maximisation and advice on heating and insulation, because I know that in one of my parishes, a request to provide such a service was requested of me. So I, I'm really pleased to hear that that is being put in place. And I just wanted to check whether this would be a service not only for our own tenants, but us also tenants in private housing. And, um, or, or, you know, I just wondered whether it would offer a service to them as well, rather than just our own tenants. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Peter Campbell, would you like to respond to that? Yes, the, 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 uh, the idea is very much this is for uh, available to everybody, um, particularly for people who are in, um, you know, all sorts of financial difficulties living in their own homes um, to so if we can um, you know, sort them out by uh, either increasing their, their income to their, to their home or reducing their expenditure, they have more chance of avoiding homelessness, and that's what we're aiming for. So, yes, it will be available. If I may come back, Leader. Uh, you may. Thank you very much. Um, uh, that's, gr uh, that's so good. <laughs> I really, really want to thank you for putting that in place, because we have so many um, vulnerable um, 
people in housing and and it would be so easy for them to slip into homelessness if we didn't give them this sort of support so thank you very much indeed and i know the particular parish will be absolutely delighted to hear that this is in place so thank you thank you so i think that's a call to make sure that we publicize this really really well so that we have a very good uptake of it it's, it's good to hear that there's an identified demand councillor bradman in your own wards so uh so i um Welcome this report. This report. Um, so the recommendations set out at paragraph three. A note the growth bids put forward, um, both one off and ongoing, and detailed appendices A and B, and consider whether those for 2022 to 2023 should be included in the budget to be proposed in February 22. B note the proposed range of service efficiencies, savings, stroke policy options detailed in appendix. Six C, sorry, and that these will undergo further refinement and consultation with stakeholders prior to forming part of the budget setting report in February 22. So, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. That's uh, unanimous. So, um, the so the cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And on to the last one now, which is fees and charges, and that's uh, Councillor John Williams again, seconded by me. Thank you, Leader. I'm not going to dwell on this. I think you all want to uh, finish the meeting and um, I'll just take any questions on the fees and charges. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, are there any questions from anybody on it? Thank you. Uh, so are there any, any questions from any member of cabinet? Any questions from any other members? That's a nice, that's a nice quickie. Jolly good. Um, so let me just uh, find where I am. Uh, oh, sorry, I should, I should just have asked prior to this, I do apologise, I should have asked if anybody wanted to um, discuss information which was commercially sensitive in the, in the, yeah, in the pink appendices, but I'm taking everyone's silence as that they don't. So we can uh, we can continue on. So, sorry, I'm trying to find it. So the recommendation is at paragraph three on page 181. Uh, recommended that cabinet consider the report and, if satisfied, to a approve the fees and charges as detailed in Appendix A of the report to take effect from the 1st of April 22, unless otherwise stated, or the earliest feasible date thereafter. And B, note the proposed variations to fees and charges in comparison to the prevailing inflation rate detailed in the report. So, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. Thank you very much. So, Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. Uh, so, we've now reached uh, the end of the agenda. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, joining us today, both in person and remotely. And thank you to our, our officer colleagues. I note the next meeting of the Cabinet scheduled to play, take place on Monday the 10th of January at 10 o'clock and uh, I do hope that you all have a very good break um, at the end of this month and come back uh, refreshed in the new year. So if we could uh, stop.